going on guys rich schneider right here of nittany nation joined by the gang we've got dylan we got clay and uh penn state's finest or soon to be penn state's finest drew Allard. drew what's going on man nothing much thanks for having me yeah no problem man so uh t- take me through your commitment i know it's been a while since i guess you probably talked about it oh uh, yeah so um penn state offered me back in i think january or february mm-hmm. and really I, I was talking to them for like a good month month and a half before they actually offered me uh mm-hmm. just talking to coach yersich and coach franklin and a lot of the staff but those were the mm-hmm. main uh two people like recruiting me the whole time throughout my process and uh I guess really what drew me to Penn State was just my relationship with both of them mm-hmm. and just the culture at Penn State. I feel like uh, it really fits me. So let's talk a little bit more about your relationship with your chitch. Obviously, he's calling a hell of an offensive game plan this season so far. How confident yeah. are you that you can kind of just step in there right away? Uh, you know, I think guess I'm just mostly looking forward to learning from him uh, because I know what he's done with uh, quarterbacks in his like previous coaching jobs like Mason Rudolph, Justin Fields, and uh, Sam Ellinger. So Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just really excited to see uh, and see the offense again uh, this coming week and just learn as much as I can from him. And it's been super fun watching just the offense play this year, especially Sean Clifford. Uh, It's been fun watching him play. So so have you talked to Clifford before? I'm assuming you probably have. What kind of relationship Uh, do you two have? Yeah, I, I've talked to him. I've met him once or twice in person, but uh, I, I like him a lot. He's super nice. I mean, he's from Ohio. He's from Cincinnati. So, yeah. you know, we, we both from Ohio. So it's super cool just to get his perspective on everything and what everything he's been through at his career at Penn State and just uh, what he what really drew him to Penn State when he was going through his recruiting process. So, so I got to ask you this. There's a rumor every other day that you're going to visit somewhere else, whether it's Ohio State, et cetera, et cetera. What, what's with these rumors? Are they just rumors at this point? Can, can we assure the Penn State fan base that th- that's all it is? Yeah, those are just rumors. I mean, I'm not even sure how they really started. I, I just saw there was like a bunch of rumors that I was at the game or going yeah. to the game. I never even had plans to go to the game. So it's kind of crazy how this stuff just circulates and spreads like wildfire, I guess. But, you know, I'm not going anywhere. All right, so I don't have to worry about tweeting it every week, right? No, no, you're good. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, you guys have a hell of a class right now. Top number four in the country, 25 total kids. There's four star and four star and four star and four star. What kind of relationship do you guys have with each other? Yeah, uh, I think we kind of like echo what the culture is at Penn State, just like a super close group. Um, we're, we're talk a lot more than just football, I guess. And we're, we're really got to know each other off the field, especially when we were all on the visit. Uh, there was a lot of commits on our official visit together. So mm-hmm. it was my first time meeting most of them in person. So, I mean, it, I'm just super grateful to be a part of this class. And um, I'm just looking forward to seeing what we can do in the future. So now two quarterbacks in the class, do you and Bo kind of go back and forth? Be like, no, I'm taking the job day one. No, I'm taking mm-hmm. it day one. Uh, no, no, I, I really like Bo. Um, he's super nice to talk to. I mean, he, he's a really good quarterback and he's having an outstanding season himself too. And mm-hmm. I know his team's still undefeated. So they're, they're playing at a really high level too. Yeah. So I know you kind of just mentioned high school football. You're obviously having a hell of a year. What, what are you doing different? Anything or uh, is it just the same old, same old? I guess, um, I mean, last year, I, I guess my preparation and in each going into each game, uh, I know I watch I watch film every day. I go in mm-hmm. early after I get out of school and watch film with my coach and mm-hmm. a couple of my receivers that get out early for probably like an hour and a half just on this upcoming opponent and mm-hmm. just installing our game plan each week. And I guess just my last year of experience, like how being a full starter for a full 10 games really helped me too, just because uh, – for me, experience was the biggest thing, and I can pick up things on the field now that I maybe wouldn't have last year or wouldn't have recognized as soon as I am this year. Mm-hmm. So now I have talked to your trainer a little bit, Brad Mandler, if I'm pronouncing that right? Yeah, Mandler. Mandler so so yeah. how has how working with him kind of helped you develop your game and bring you to that next level? Uh, it's really helped me. He's been one of the biggest helps in my game mm-hmm. um, and my development in general just because of the, how much I've worked with him uh, since sophomore year, off, yeah. off season of going into junior year. He's really helped me just, I guess, just with my throwing mechanics and just mm-hmm. game-like situations. I mean, we go through a bunch of drills and simulate game pressure uh, and a lot of off-platform stuff and movement stuff just because, you know, as much as we want to be clean in the pocket and just be able to sit back and drop, uh, most of the time that's not going to happen. You're going to have to move and um 
uh, throw the ball from different arm angles and different platforms. So he's really helped me with that part of my game. So, so he brought that up to me too. He was telling me about how uh, you have that Patrick Mahomes type of little yeah. like sidearm throw that you got there. How's that? How's that developing? Are we going to see that at the next level? Uh, yeah, I think he will a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully. He, he compared you to some pretty damn good quarterbacks. Uh, if, you, if you had to compare your game to any quarterback ever, whether it's a former college guy, retired, current NFL person, who, who would it be? Uh, I don't know if I would compare myself to just one because I like watching so many different quarterbacks, I guess. Uh, so, like, who's your go-to film? Like, Friday night and you're, you're going to study film, I'm going to watch this guy. Uh, I love watching Aaron Rodgers just because of the way he's been in the – like how much he's dominated the league and how long he's, his career has lasted. And just the way he uh, moves in the pocket, I really like watching him play. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't got much more. You guys got any other questions? He's, he's, he's pretty good with this. I'll admit it. You, you formed a really good relationship with another Ohio guy in Caden Saunders. One of, uh, one of the big things Sean Cliver has talked about in the past, the relationship he had with K.J. Hamler coming in. Talk a little bit about how that relationship started and kind of how it's grown because you guys are two kind of leaders of this class. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess it, it really grew when um, I reached out to him before I committed and told him I, I wanted to like I was told him I was committing soon and I just wanted to get my, our relationship started like just on the field. So, you no, know, I went down in, to Columbus with my quarterback trainer and met him. Mm -hmm probably like two weeks after I announced that I was committing and we were throwing routes. I brought a couple of my receivers down and he brought uh, one of his teammates to catch too. So really it was just uh, working together and I guess me just learning how he runs his routes and uh, just getting used to throwing him the ball. And I, I really like talking to him off the field too. So I, I was just talking to him after his game Friday because uh, they, they won their first round of the playoffs, and they're, they're going to play uh, Mass and Washington, who's a pretty good mm -hmm. team this week. And then kind of further to that point, I think when, when both of you committed, it was pretty soon people were like, well, they'll end up at Ohio State. It's kind of what Ohio kids have done in the past. How exciting is it for you two to be able to kind of set your own kind of story there and kind of break the mold? Is that something you talk about in terms of paving your own way? Uh, I've never really thought of it that way. I kind of just thought of like Penn State's the best fit for me. And mm -hmm. I feel like it's the best like culture for me to go into. And um, I'm super excited to just learn everything I can from the staff and just uh, meet every every player that's there right now, too, because I, they have a pretty good team, even though people mm -hmm. may not think it. They, they have a pretty good team. So it's going to be cool just to be a part of that team soon. Awesome. I appreciate it. Dylan, if you got anything. Yeah, I think the the biggest point for me is uh, I just saw, I think, earlier yesterday, earlier this weekend, uh, a quote where you said not maybe at around this time last year, a little uh, before that, you didn't really think of yourself as a, a, maybe a big time college football player. Uh, and then, I mean, you're, it seems like your sitch came to Penn State in mid-January last year. Uh, and then a little bit, a couple of days after that, we started hearing your name connected to Penn State. Uh, the offer eventually came and you committed pretty fast there. And then since then, you've really just taken off across the board and the industry. What has that been for just for you, like going from not really knowing what your future may have held college wise to now being considered one of the top quarterbacks in the entire country? Uh, yeah, it's super cool. I think um, it's just from all the hard work I've done in the past two off seasons, really like hitting the weight room, getting adding more muscle and weight to myself. Because uh, sophomore year, I was pretty like kind of I had I was tall, but I was kind of like skinny then. Mm -hmm. So I guess just filling out my frame and adding not losing any mobility, kind of adding more quickness and explosiveness into my game has really helped me. And um, just how much I worked with my receivers, uh, high school receivers in the off season and how much we, we dove into our own playbook and I guess just prepare for the games each week has really helped me. And just all, like through all the exposure I've been to through this off season, just helping me stay grounded and just kind of take it day by day and work as hard as I can each day. Sure. And then uh, the last one I have um, kind of going back there, um, and you may have touched on this earlier, but uh, with your commitment to Penn State, and like I said, it was, it was kind of a quick process compared to most recruitments. 
Yurcic came in in January, and then, like I said, it, it didn't take all that long, a couple months for you to commit. Uh, what was it about Penn State that really sold you sold you that quickly uh, to the program? Oh uh, yeah, I, I'd say the biggest thing is my relationship with Coach Yurcic and Coach Franklin. Um, just because you know they talked to me a lot before they even offered me, and it, it was super like, I guess different a couple it was kind of different from a different schools that had offered me because some schools kind of just called and offered me and they didn't like really know who I was before they offered me so they really set a foundation for a relationship before they offered me and uh they talked to me constantly probably like three times a week throughout my recruitment and they still I still talk to them a lot so I guess that was the biggest thing and just uh, you know, the other commits that were committed before me, just welcoming me in uh, and just showing me acceptance, I guess it, it really made it easy for me to kind of just pick Penn State out of all the offers I had. Uh, th thanks, Drew. That's all I got. All right. all right. I got a couple more for you, Drew. I've been thinking. Right. <laughs> I've been thinking of some good ones. So <laughs> one of the top ranked quarterbacks on almost every service, if not every recruiting service, how, how crazy is that of a process? Like, take me through it. Is it like, is your phone blowing up like 24 seven? You just start blocking coaches at some points? <laughs> um, no, I didn't. I mean, it was super, it was super cool and exciting when I was going through like the recruiting process. Uh, it, it did get overwhelming at times just because, you know, my recruiting process, uh, process was kind of different from other quarterbacks. Uh, yeah. People pr usually get offered earlier than I did. Uh, I really started gaining momentum this past off season with offers. Like I only had, I think four going into my junior season. And by the end of the season, I was up to like nine or 10. So it really was a different process for me. And it, it got to a point where I was having like calls, like, all, like every day with probably two or three different colleges. And mm -hmm. I thought uh, I kind of had my mindset that I think Penn state's going to be the place for me to go and play football and continue mm -hmm. my academic career. And I guess that's when I kind of knew, uh, my process was like kind of uh, ending when I, everything was kind of building up. Yeah. So now obviously you're not only committed to Penn state, but you're committed to the all, uh, all American bowl, not army anymore, but uh, whatever it is, Adidas are all American or yeah, something like Adidas. that. Yeah. Um, so what, tell me about that. Like, how'd that come about? You just get a DM randomly or like. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, the guy, I was originally committed to the Under Armour game. Um, okay. I didn't, yeah, and then when uh, – Yeah, but no one wants yeah. to wear Under Armour, right? <laughs> <laughs> but then when uh, uh, Eric Richards, uh, uh, director of the Adidas All-American game, called me, yeah. um, I guess I just thought I wanted to go play in that game. Uh, and just – I knew um, Nick Singleton was already going to that game, who at the time was a pretty big recruit for us. He wasn't committed yet. And then um, – also deny uh, he wasn't committed yet and he was yeah. already committed to the game. So I guess just trying to go and play with those guys before mm -hmm. uh, college was a super cool like idea to me. And I thought it would help just trying to get them to come and commit to Penn State. Yeah. So, I mean, we, the last one I got for you, we talked about it before. You got to up the drip game a little bit. We need like a, you need the sleeve, you need something. <laughs> the wristbands are good. I'll give you that, but you got to up it a little bit. What are we going to do to change this? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I've worn sleeves a couple times this year, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't see any photos yet. Then I, I got to get out to a game. Then all right, <laughs> all right, for sure. All right, I appreciate it, man. That, that's all I got for you. I think uh, Clay and Dylan, you're good. I'm good, Drew. I appreciate you joining us. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Drew. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank I'll you. talk to you. All right, thank you. Yep, no problem. Have a good one. You too.